Hey everybody, it's Mr. N here, and uh, today we're going to cover uh, this first section in chapter 10, which is on um, circles and then lines that intersect the circles. So let's go ahead and get started. And the first thing we have here is we just got to make sure we understand what the interior of a circle is and what the exterior of a circle is. The interior would be inside the circle. The exterior would be obviously outside the the circle. So the interior is a set of all points on the inside of the circle. The exterior is a set of all points on the outside. Then we've got some definitions here, and um, some of these you already know, but let's go ahead and talk about them. The first one is called a chord. And on a chord of a circle, it is a segment whose endpoints lie on the circle. So if I have an endpoint here and say an endpoint there, this is a chord that connects these two. Oops. Right. Let's try to redraw that a little bit straight. So this would be the chord that connects the two. Now, it doesn't have to go through there. It could go, say, down here. And there's a special one. If the chord goes through the center like this, we will call this the diameter. So this is a chord. This special piece, as long as it goes through the center, is still a chord, but it's actually the diameter. So we can write that in there. Then we have the other one, which is a secant. A secant intersects a circle at two points. So the word secant means cut in Latin. So when you have a secant, it's going to go right through the circle. And this is a line, so it extends on forever. So as long as it cuts through the circle, it's going to be a secant. Again, it can cut through here. It doesn't matter. It can cut that way. Okay, so I'm going to just get rid of this one for now, and we're just going to stick with the first one I drew. And this is a secant. And then the next one is a tangent. And on a tangent, this is a Latin word for touches. So a tangent is a line in the same plane as a circle and intersects in only one spot. So if I drew a line that just touches the circle right there in one spot, this is a tangent. Um, what you can think of is like, suppose I took say, um, a yardstick or a ruler, and I had a basketball, and I just touch that to the basketball, it will only touch it in one spot. It won't cut through the basketball. So think of it like that. You have something circular, and the tangent line will just touch it in one spot. And where it touches it is called the point of tangency. So this right there is the point of tangency. Okay, we know that a diameter is a chord. We've already said that. So it's a chord that goes through the center of the circle. And then we can say that the diameter is twice the radius. And that's something you should have already known. And we can extend this out to be three-dimensional. And we can say that a sphere is a set of all points in space because a circle is a set of all points in a plane. So a sphere is now, when we're talking about three-dimensional in space, and these are all the points that are equidistant from a given point. So that's what a sphere ends up being. Okay, then um, each sphere has a great circle. So it's the largest circle that could be, found, that could be formed inside the sphere. So here's how you think of the, the uh, great circle. Suppose I take an orange, and I slice the orange through the middle. Well, what do you mean slice it through the middle? There's a bunch of different ways I can slice that orange through the middle. So if I have an orange here, uh, just excuse my bad sphere. As long as I slice it through the middle, doesn't matter which way, when I hold that out, I'll get two parts to the orange. This is a great circle right there. So 
as long as it slices it through the center, you're going to get something called the great circle. All right. And while we're on before, let me just double check that I said this. All of these words apply to a sphere, as just like they do to the circle. They apply to a sphere. So you can use the same terminology. All right, moving on. Let's take a look at what we have next. Then we've got congruent circles. Um, these are two circles that have the same exact radii. So as long as the radii are the same length right here, then the circles will be congruent. Then you have concentric circles. Um, these are coplanar circles within, with the same center. So concentric circles, as long as you have the center point, you will be good. Now, what I like to think of it as, uh, suppose uh, you go out to a lake on a really, really, or a pond uh, in the morning when everything is really still and the water's not moving, you throw a rock, you're going to get concentric circles when it hits the water. Then you've got uh, tangent circles, and on tangent circles, these are circles that will just touch in one spot, so you can have the circle inside of it, or both of them being on the outside right there. If it's on the inside, we say they are internally tangent. If it's on the outside, we say they're externally tangent. And then moving on to here, um, you have common external tangents and common internal tangents. For common external tangents, notice the two tangents do not cross through the middle of the circle. So these two tangents and this tangent and this tangent they're tangent to each of the circles, and they stay on the outsides of the circles. But if they're internal, they will cross through in between the two circles. Notice how this one is tangent here and here, tangent here and here. So this line is tangent to both. So is this one. And these two intersect, and they cross through that center part there. So they're, we're going to say these are common internal tangents. These will remain as common external tangents. All right, moving on. We've got this theorem, which is um, in this book called the Tangent Line to a Circle Theorem. And here's what it says. In a plane, a line is tangent to a circle if and only if the line is perpendicular to the radius of the circle at its endpoint on the circle. So as long as I have a tangent line, if I draw a from the center, if I do the radius to the tangent line, it will always be perpendicular. So wherever I put a tangent line, let's draw another circle, and I'll draw it right here. And let's draw a tangent line going this way, say. When I, from the center, draw the radius, it will always be perpendicular to the tangent line. Now we have our next theorem, and on this one, it says the external tangent congruence theorem. That's what your uh, author of this book calls it. And <clears throat> it's tangent segments from a common external point are congruent. So here's what it's saying. If I have this point right out here and I draw a tangent and I draw a tangent, these two will be congruent. So when I draw those tangents, you end up with these segments as being congruent. So this segment from S to R will be congruent from S to T. All right, let's move on. And <clears throat> how do you construct the tangent to a circle? I'm going to refer you to the video I have online. So look at the constructions video. And the basic steps I will tell you is you have, you have your center, which would be right here. And since you want to construct a tangent, what you need to do is you can draw a radius. So we will construct, we'll draw a point right there on the circle, and we'll make that radius. And we know from our theorem up here that it has to be perpendicular, right? It has to be perpendicular. So the next step in this, and you can watch the video for it, is to just make a perpendicular line. So you're looking to do a perpendicular from a point to 
this point right here. So you're going to be drawing that perpendicular like that. That's what you're going to be constructing. So look at for the one where you're drawing a perpendicular from a point not on the line. So that's the <clears throat> that's the video you're going to want to see. And I'll go ahead and put it in today's um, blog, uh, the daily blog, where to find that video. All right. So moving on, let's take a look. I want you to uh, take out those student journals, and we're going to do page 282, 1 through 10. Okay, so here is that student journal page, and we've got to name the first one here, 2 radii. Okay, so 2 radii, I'm looking at the circle. I could say AF and AB. Uh, name a chord. Well, uh, there's, let's see, I've got a couple situations here. I could say EC. I could also say DF, right? The diameter is a chord, correct? So I could say segment EC and segment DF. Um, this would be segment AF and segment AB. Uh, you could also have said, um, for another chord, you could have said DE. We'll call it just segment DE, right? So either one of those. Okay, name a diameter. That would be DF. That would be my diameter. Name a secant. A secant goes through it. That would be line DE. Again, you need a line symbol because it's a secant. Name a tangent. This would be line B. I don't have a point out here to name it, so I'll just say line B. And then name the point of tangency. That would be at B. For number seven, uh, tell how many common tangents the circles uh, have and draw them. So let's take a look. We've got, I could make a common tangent like right there. That's one. I could make a common tangent like that. Oops, I didn't draw that one so well. And that's pretty much it. There's no other common tangents that I could draw to these two circles. So two. Uh, tell whether uh, each common tangent in x 7 is, so these would be external tangents because they don't cross within. All right, let's take a look at two more over here. Number <clears throat> nine, let's use this color, and uh, find B to D. Well, we know this is going to be perpendicular right there because this is a tangent. It tells us in the problem that D is a point of tangency, and I know that's 10, so I can find BD, which would be 10 squared minus 5.5 squared equals B D squared. So working this out on our calculators, 10 squared, 100 minus 5.5 squared, and then take the square root of that answer, I would get BD as being 8.35. Okay. Um, point C is also a point of tangency. So now they're telling us point C is a point of tangency. If B to C was 4x plus 6, so b to c is 4x plus 6. Find the value of x to the nearest tenth. Well, here's the thing. We already found this piece right here to be 8.35. So we know that if I have a common point from an, two tangents from the same external point that these two will be congruent. So that means 4x plus 6 equals 8.35. So 4x equals 2.35. And then you can divide it out. So 2.35 divided by the 4 comes out to be uh, 0.5. They said the tenth. I'm just going to go to two places, 0.59. All right. Hopefully this lesson uh, is pretty easy for you guys. Uh, it's the first section, so it should be. Um, just check what the homework is, and uh, good luck, and make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. All right.